My name is Ayman Ahmed. I'm a consultant nephrologist at Langshar Teaching Hospitals. I have a subspecialty interest in kidney transplantation and, and I will give three lectures in the transplantation online course for the Global Kidney Academy year 2014. First lecture is the assessment of the potential kidney recipient. The objectives of the lecture is to cover the benefits advantages of kidney transplantation, how we select patients for transplantation, the relative and the absolute contraindications for kidney transplantation, assessment of potential kidney recipient and assessment of a high risk patient or recipient. Kidney transplantation has many advantages to the patients compared to other forms of renal replacement therapy. It, is, it has clearly a survival advantage. Transplantation also improves the quality of life, in addition to the correction of the metabolic consequences and complication, complications associated with chronic kidney disease. Transplantation reduces the cardiovascular risk associated with chronic kidney disease as well. It also has economic advantage, as it is cheaper on the long term compared to dialysis. Transplantation allows successful, allows successful pregnancy in female patients, which is impossible on dialysis. And finally, it has many socio-economic benefits, for example, returning to full-time job. It was shown clearly that receiving a kidney improve, improves the sur survival compared to staying on dialysis on the transplant waiting list. Here, when corrected in model 1, for age, gender, primary renal disease, social deprivation, deprivation, time since waiting listing has shown significant significant lower relative risk of mortality two years after transplantation versus the dialysis patient on the waiting list. And, when, and even when corrected for other comorbidities, still survival is better when receiving a kidney. And that's as shown in model two. There is clear reduction in cardiovascular mortality in transplant patients compared to staying on dialysis. However, that's still worse than the general population. Transplantation is cheaper than dialysis. In the UK, the average cost of dialysis is about 30,000 per patient per year, while the cost of kidney transplantation is 20,000 per patient per kidney transplant. The immunosuppression medications required by the patient with the transplant cost around 6,500 sterling per patient per year. With simple calculation, you can tell in the UK, in the first year of kidney transplantation, you would save 3,500 sterling, and subsequent years you will save 23,500 sterling. Although these figures will be different in different countries, but it is likely that successful kidney transplant after the first year is more cheaper than staying on dialysis in many countries. Although that it's clear that um, kidney transplantation is the best renal replacement therapy option for end-stage renal disease patients, but kidneys are limited. And the potential sources are limited too. The sources of kidney transplant is from a diseased donor or a living donor. Disease donor could be donating, donation after prey and death, which is known as heart beating, heart beating donor, while donation after cardiac death is known as non-heart beating donor. And I believe that this will be covered in other parts of the course. Kidney from living person could be related donor, genetically related family member, or emotionally related like spouse, friends and neighbours. Altruistic donor is someone donating in good faith to help other people like donating blood and that could be non-directed which means donating anonymously to unknown 
stranger. While directed altruistic is now even legal in the UK, where the person can direct to whom he's giving the kidney, the potential recipient is either a CKD5 pre-dialysis patient with estimated GFR below 15 mil per minute. Having said that, discussion for kidney transplantation should start or should be thought about when the estimated GFR drops below 20 mil per minute, but the actual transplantation should not occur before the GFR drop down to 15 mil per minute. Potential recipient could be also a CKD5 patient on dialysis or a patient with a failing kidney transplant. Patients with type 1 diabetes, whether pre-dialysis or on dialysis, should be considered for simultaneous kidney pancreas transplant. It is essential to be aware of the relative and the absolute contraindications for transplantation. That will form part of the discussion and the consent that that would be discussed with the patient. Current cancer is an absolute contraindication for kidney transplantation. Previous malignancy, which depends on depending on the type of the cancer and how many years it was cleared for some types of cancer, it is essential to wait for three years and others you have to wait for five years before you consider transplantation. Same for infection. If there is significant or relative risk of flare-up of the infection by the immune suppressive medication, that should be considered as a relative or absolute contraindication according to the infection and the severity and the possibility of the flare-up. And each case should be discussed and considered on an individual basis. High recurrence rate of the original disease has been taken as a relative and even an absolute contraindication for transplantation. The patient has lost the first kidney transplant. Soon after the transplant, it would be a contraindication to, tra to be transplanted again. However, as I said, that should be discussed and considered on an individual basis. Patient with high BMI, patient with current and previous cardiac history, and patient with other respiratory or other medical conditions and comorbidities should be classified and flagged as high risk recipients and should receive thorough assessment. At the end of the day, the aim of kidney transplantation is to give the patient the best renal replacement therapy option without compromising the patient's status or make them worse by receiving a kidney. It is essential to make sure that transplantation is technically possible and the survival of the recipient is not compromised. The graft survivor is not limited by, by clear premature death or short lifespan. In another words, dying with a functioning kidney transplant. It is essential to make sure that pre-existing conditions are not exacerbated by the transplantation or the medication and also to make sure that the pre- and post-operative period is not having clear risk for the patients and trying to minimize the pre- and post-operative complications if possible. That is driven from, the know from, from knowing the fact that most causes of death in transplant recipient early on post-transplant is because of cardiovascular disease and infection. Preemptive transplantation means that the recipient would receive a kidney before the need for dialysis. Preemptive transplantation should be considered as the first choice of pre for pre-dialysis CKD5 patients. Preemptive transplantation has shown been shown to have a better graft and patient survival compared to receiving a kidney on the dialysis for both live donors and diseased donors. So the longer the wait on dialysis before receiving the kidney, 
the wars survival post transplantation comparing compared to receiving a kidney preemptively old age is not a contraindication for transplantation by its own the associated comorbidities which make elderly potential recipient unsuitable for transplantation some centers have an upper cutoff to consider patient for kidney transplantation and for spontaneous kidney pancreas transplant older patients have significant improvement in survival when compared to similar patients who remain on the waiting list with reduction in mortality between 41 percent to 61 percent the use of living donors even for older living recipient have significant better outcomes when compared to standard disease donors in the absence of living donor survival is significantly increased as well by accepting an extended criteria donor rather than waiting for an organ from for, uh, from a standard criteria donor and also I believe the extended criteria donor and the standard criteria will be discussed elsewhere in the course generally speaking extended criteria donor receiving a kidney from diseased donor with at least two of the following hypertension serum creatinine more than 1.5 milligram per deciliter or if the cause of death of the donor is cerebrovascular accident now we will look at how to assess a potential recipient ideally assessment for kidney transplantation should be carried out in a dedicated clinic in multidisciplinary approach some center had a bigger multidisciplinary approach than others and that could include cardiology vascular and transplant surgeon transplant surgeon and also an essential member of the team is the transplant nurse we should meet the recipient, the potential recipient first, to take blood group samples for blood group and tissue typing to assess the CKD status and if the patient on dialysis, the duration on dialysis. Preemptive transplantation should be encouraged for pre-dialysis patient, which, which, which uh, encourage with assessment. Also, possible live donors should be always asked and considered. Assessment should include taking detailed history from the recipient, including the primary renal disease. All of these I will mention will have, might have implication on successful transplantation. The past medical history, the, co the current and the previous comorbidities, medication history, surgical history, family history, social history, smoking, alcohol, previous transplant, previous blood transfusion, pregnancy for ladies, the cause of failure of a previous graft. After taking history, thorough examination is essential, including assess assessment of the BMI, taking the patient's weight, the blood pressure, whether that's very high or even low, could be significant. During examination, examination of the respiratory and the cardiovascular system might reveal abnormalities that would prompt further assessment and referrals to specialists. Routine blood should be taken in addition to the specific bloods for virology, including hepatitis B and C, Epstein Barr virus, CMV, and HIV. Patients should be asked about the general population screening programs for, 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 for older patients like the BAP smear, a female and above 40, the PSA in males are for above 50, mammograms for ladies. But there is no specific screening that should be taken. If the patient is not vaccinated, is not um, seronegative for the varicella zoster virus then the patient should be vaccinated it would be very difficult to give any live 
attenuated vaccine post transplantation because that could clear up the infection. After that, imaging should be dental referral is essential if the patient suffer from any dental infections or caries which could potentially flare up after the transplantation by receiving the immunosuppressive medication. And from the examination and the investigations we just mentioned, we could discover something abnormal that prompt referral to cardiology, urology or gastroenterology. The specific cardiac workup as a part of the transplantation assessment. Patients with abnormal ECG, abnormal chest X-ray, and an abnormal echo should undergo treadmill testing, exercise tolerance tests. Also, high-risk patients should have that test as well, including diabetics, patients with left ventricular failure, and smokers. Some also claim that above the age of 50 or 55, it should also undergo a treadmill testing. If there is abnormal treadmill testing that the patient should go for cardiac perfusion scan or if the patient can't perform the exercise test. A patient with a history of ischemic heart disease, hypertension, type 2 diabetes as a cause of end-stage renal disease, a patient with abnormal resting ECG, a patient with abnormal echo showing left ventricular dysfunction should all undergo cardiac perfusion testing. And if there is any abnormality in the cardiac perfusion testing, or if the patient is symptomatic with angina, or if the echo is abnormal showing ejection fraction less than 45%, all these should be referred to cardiology for further assessment, including angiogram, and even the patient could go up, uh, could go up um, for a bypass before kidney transplantation. Other non-invasive cardiac testing could include stress echodobutamine in some centers, CT coronary angiogram showing the coronary calcification that could show the coronary calcification, and troponin as a predictor of cardiac death in the pre-dialysis patient as a marker. However, that is not widely used. There is also specific vascular workup for potential recipients. And this is usually for patients who showed abnormalities in the examination like femoral proese, patient with long-term femoral vascular axis, patient with history of claudication, patient with absent or weak femoral pulses or femoral proese. The femoral angiogram could show iliac stenosis or severe peripheral vascular disease and that could prompt vascular referral for further assessment. Also patient with cardiac proese should undergo cardiac topics to assess the vascular disease. Patients who are type 1 diabetics and usually less than the age of 50 should be considered for a simultaneous kidney pancreas transplant. In addition to the previous work and the investigations I've mentioned, HbA1c and c peptide should be done to confirm that they are type 1 diabetics and not type 2. After, after doing all these history examination and investigation and if the patient passed all that successfully, the following step would be to refer for surgical assessment or if the transplant surgeon is part of your MDT clinic, that would be straightforward. Always ask about live do donors. When the patient get on the trans gets on the transplant list, Every year, they should be invited back to the transplant assessment clinic for what we call annual review to make sure that they are still fit to stay on the transplant list. What we do in this clinic, we ask them about any new comorbidities, any new drug that they've started, any medical problems that they had over the last year or, or significant health problems that could have implication on them staying on the transplant list. If they have received any blood transfusion during the 12 months, and then we do routine test, blood test, virology, and trying to identify during examination history any new risk factors, problems, or habits like smoking. 
after the assessment in the, for the, in the annual review, the outcomes would be the patient is fit to stay on the transplant list or temporary removal from the list ben pending further assessment or further investigation or further referral to other specialties like cardiology, vascular, etc. The third option is that the patient is not fit to stay on the list and be taken permanently from the list. Or a fourth option that the patient is suspended because a potential live donor is ready for the patient. Obviously the patient should be counselled for that and agree that he would be suspended. Thank you. End of the first lecture.